In this video, I'm going to tell you the fastest way you can escape a flare up of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis and get into remission. So firstly, we need to look at what a flare up actually is. It's when we get raised levels of something called CRP, which is a type of protein in the blood, or we can have raised fecal calprotectin levels, which is inflammation found in the stool. Also, it indicates whether there's inflammation occurring in our gut lining. So there's numerous different methods they can check for this, whether it be a blood test or a stool sample. But if these levels are elevated, there's a good chance that you're experiencing a flare up. Also, if you get other symptoms, like you're getting really achy joints, you're getting really inflamed skin, it's a good chance that you're not taking in the right nutrients. And that might be the case because the lining of your GI tract is inflamed and ulcerated, so it's not bringing in all these nutrients to actually nourish your body. Give the digestive system a break. Now, this is so, so important. There are so many people out there that think they can take so many different substances, so many supplements to heal the digestive system. Well, guess what? The digestive system is healed by the body through the process of inflammation. It's the number one process that's healing us. It's the only thing that's healing us. There's no substance you can take that actually directly heals the body. It undergoes the process of inflammation to heal itself through, like I said, bruising on the outside of our body, cuts on the outside of our body. They're also apparent because we can see them. Well, the problem with ulcerations and inflammation happening along the course of our digestive tract is you can't see it. You can only experiencing it, experience it through kind of maybe you might get a bit of blood or diarrhea, but you can't actually see what's going on. What the body is doing is employing this protective mechanism over a part of the lining of the gut to allow it to heal. So that area needs to be left alone as long as possible in order to give it the best chance to heal. It's also worth noting that digestion is the biggest catabolic process in the human body. This means a process that has to use up cells and tissue in order to kind of carry out the roles it does in order to produce all of these digestive enzymes and hormones and break down the foods to absorb into the bloodstream. So the number of times we initiate digestion in a day actually amounts to the number of times we release this catabolic process in the body. Whereas on the other hand, sleep and rest is anabolic. It allows the buildup of body, bodily tissues and cells, including the inflammation process to take place. So, so those of you who are eating so many times in a day, you're keeping your body in this catabolic state, this process where it is continuously breaking down. This is why when you ta end up taking things like prednisolone, you're eating so many times in a day and you might start to feel good, but really then your joints start really hurting and your bones feel horrible and everything. It's because it's keeping your body in a catabolic state. All this food that you're eating, it's leaching away at the bones because you need to be able to meet this demand of energy in order to allow this digestive process to take place. So really what you need to do is take every measure possible to eat the right foods and give your digestive system a break where you can. So this nicely leads on to my next point, which is you need to eat to nourish the body. This is just absolutely paramount, guys. You need to eat the most easily digestible foods possible, which are broken down easily by the human body early on in the system and that provide the most nutrition for the body to give it the nourishment to produce these digestive enzymes to allow that scab, scabbing and ulceration to take place over the digestive tract. And also, if you eat the right foods that are broken down early enough, then they won't irritate that part of the gut lining that is inflamed and you can leave that part alone. So these are gonna be a lot of the foods that actually are very low in carbohydrates, uh, fiber and starch. None of these are really going to get any further than the end of the small intestine before they're broken down and the nutrients are absorbed. So you're looking at a lot of the animal products like certain meats out there, maybe raw dairy, raw honey, fish, eggs, all of these type of products are really going to help you to get out of a flare if you prepare them in the right form. It's very important to prepare foods properly through processes like fermentation, culturing. If you want to go near plant foods, then so can sprout, but I would really ideally opt towards animal products, ferment them, and then what's going to happen is you're going to increase the B vitamin content, they're going to be more living, give you more energy, and also provide you with that bacteria that your digestive tract is probably lacking, and that bacteria is going to help with bowel motility, 
and also to properly ferment the food you're eating so that you don't have the abnormal fermentation leading to gas, bloating and all sorts of other symptoms. So I just want to insert this quickly here guys. This is in my opinion probably the number one food for this condition because of all the benefits it's got nutritionally, how easily digested it is by the body and just how nutritionally dense it is. And that is 24 hour fermented yogurt with raw milk. Now I'll go on to make a future video about this exactly telling you how to make it, you know, the process, the equipment you need, but it is really simple. It is literally just raw milk, you know, raw yogurt if you can get hold of it, if not just a full fat Greek yogurt, throw them in together into a yogurt maker or something that will keep them at a human temperature, human body temperature, about 37 degrees for 24 hours, eat it while it's warm, the enzymatic activity is going to be absolutely fantastic and also the B vitamin content is going to be through the roof. It's going to provide you with so much energy. And like I said, it's broken down so soon in the system to give the rest of the, the digestive system a break. And what we need to get from our foods is to nourish our body with the right nutrients. It's not to heal the gut with food. That doesn't work. As I said before, the body heals itself through the process of inflammation. The job of food is to give our body the right nutrients so it can carry out these processes easier. So number four very much leads on to another point I mentioned earlier on in the video, which is about giving your digestive system a break. Now, those of you who are eating large amounts, not a good idea at all, especially if you're in a flare and you want to escape it because we have a very small stomach that's only capable of breaking down a small capacity of foods in one given meal. So if you keep filling up that stomach with more foods than it can handle, it's not going to have the digestive juices, the hydrochloric acid to break down all that food you're eating. And because of this, large food particles can actually pass through the stomach into the small intestine and lead to kind of immune response. They can escape through the gut lining and into the bloodstream, leading to all these joint problems you get, all these kind of arthritis issues, eczema, skin problems, all of those type of issues are caused by these foreign proteins escaping through the stomach because they haven't been broken down properly. And all of this stems because you might be eating too much in a single meal. And then eating frequently is exactly the point I mentioned earlier, which is that digestion is a catabolic process. And in order to escape a flare and allow the body to recover, we need to be looking towards anabolic processes, which is actually resting. But in order to rest and give the digestive system a break, as I mentioned before, we need to make sure we're consuming those nutritionally dense foods that allow our body to go from one meal to the next, maybe three, four, five hours in between with no food whatsoever, and also provide the body with the right vitamins and minerals, fatty acids, in order to heal up the digestive tract and to give us energy and allow us to rest in between. And I just want to make the point with, along with eating too much at a single meal, Make sure that you don't drink loads at the same meal as well because of this small capacity of our stomach. We want to make sure the stomach is primarily focused on getting the nutrients, breaking down the food and getting the nutrients and the minerals from our food rather than kind of diluting our stomach acid with maybe a pint of water with dinner. Maybe save your, your drinks in between meals, guys. I think it's probably the best thing to do if you want to try and escape a flare. So this comes to foods to cut down on. And if anything, in my opinion, this is probably more important than the foods to eat because yes, we need lots of nourishing foods in our body, but there's no point eating the nourishing foods if we're still eating loads of foods out there that are making their way the whole way through the digestive tract, irritating the gut lining, fermenting the colon, and leading to all sorts of these bloating issues, you know, feeding all the bad microbes that are there because we've maybe been on a course of antibiotics, just causing you so much distress later on in the digestive system because you're eating so many of these foods and just not allowing that, that part of the system to heal over and to have a break. So some of the worst foods you can be eating if you want to try and escape a flare Number one, in my opinion, a lot of these starchy root vegetables, potatoes, carrots, parsnips, all of them are just going to be so hard to digest. They're going to make their way the whole way through the digestive system and probably end up feeding and fermenting yeast and fungus towards the end of our system, creating this excess gas, bloating. It's going to rub against the gut lining that's inflamed. I don't think you're going to be able to escape remission easily if you are eating any of these starchy root vegetables. Then we've got nuts, seeds, legumes, all of these foods with tough outer shells 
and are just so hard to digest by the body and they just can't be broken down at all. So they create all of this gas fermentation. Again, they make their way the whole way through the digestive system. They're gonna irritate the gut lining. You're gonna probably stay in a flare if you consume these on a daily basis. Gluten and casein are two proteins found out there that are really difficult to break down by the body. Uh, I would probably avoid gluten altogether if you can. As, the, as with the case with casein is that if you have a raw dairy product, like I mentioned before, a 24-hour fermented yogurt, the fermentation process actually breaks down lactose, which is the milk sugar, and casein, which is the milk protein. So your body can actually absorb it really easily. And there are a lot of people out there that react badly with just milk or yogurt. They get lots of bloated symptoms. But as soon as they ferment it over maybe 24 hours, they can absorb it a lot easier and actually get the nutrients from it. Other foods I would personally avoid, foods with high insoluble fiber content. These are just gonna pass the whole way through our digestive system because fiber and cellulose can't be digested, gonna irritate the gut lining. Probably some of the worst foods out there. A lot of the vegetables out there, in all honesty, guys, I would probably stay clear of most vegetables if you can, if you can possibly. And then finally, we've got sugar and refined carbohydrates. Now, these are just going to keep your blood sugar level really high, and they're just devoid of any nutrition our body needs. We don't want to eat for the purpose of making ourselves feel full and satiated. We actually want to eat for nutrition to nourish our body. It's not about just eating to be full, guys. This is really important. The process, if you want to escape a flare, you need to drop all of those foods that are going to offer you no nutritional benefit. And sugar is probably number one on the list. And number two soon after is refined carbohydrates. So things like pasta and rice, all of those things that just don't offer you what your body needs in order to repair. And number five, try not to put any more stress on your life or on your body, guys, in the process of when you are actually inflamed because this stress is going to put your body in something called a sympathetic dominant state. This is a nervous state where blood flows away from the digestive system into the heart and it gets pumped from the heart around the body into your peripheral muscles because your body anticipates danger. Instead of doing this, we need to put the body in something called a parasympathetic mode, which is known as a rest, digest, and repair mode. And this only happens when we're relaxed, we're in a, we're in a rested state. Obviously, this happens most often when we're asleep at night, but we can influence it happening during the day as well if we avoid a lot of these confrontational arguments and getting really stressed and anxious about life. So again, it goes hand in hand with how you feel in a flare. If you are in a lot of pain, it's gonna be hard to take a rest but where you can, try not to introduce more stresses into your life. Maybe if you've got friends out there that continuously invite you out and you're thinking in your head, I can't manage this. I don't feel I can push my body into this, but I'm going to force myself anyway. Probably the wrong mindset to have, especially if you're borderline on a flare and you want to try and escape it. You've got to learn how to say no to people, even the, your best friends out there. They should remain your best friends if they really understand what's going on with you. But you need this time to gradually escape that flare and get into remission and the best way of doing that is by taking a break from kind of strenuous activities and events and finally that leads us on to sleep as well which is probably the most important thing i've mentioned on today's video do not disregard the power of sleep it's just so essential like i said this biggest biggest anabolic process in the body that allows our body to rest digest and repair itself so really what we want to be doing is not going on all these events late at night, staying out till stupid hours in the morning and actually disregarding sleep. We want to make sure we're getting maybe, I don't know, eight, nine, ten hours at the max, maybe between those periods of time as, you know, a nice rested sleep with nothing on our minds. You know, try to maybe kit your bedroom out in the best possible way so you get the most relaxing sleep. Don't look at all these screens really late at night just before you go to bed. If you want to try and escape a flare, make sure you put sleep at the top of your priorities. Question of the day, guys, how do you define a flare-up of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis? Do you just define it clinically as elevated levels of CRP or calprotectin? Or do you think that when your joints feel really achy and you know, you've got really inflamed skin, do you class that as being in a flare-up? Let me know down below in the comment section. And finally, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm coming out with new videos every single Monday and Thursday at 5 p.m. UK time. I really don't want you guys to miss a single one because I've got some